If for somebody who has been following the electric vehicle transition, I'm sure you've heard that companies like Ford, GM, and other legacy automakers are thought to be in really big trouble. And I spent the last few days really digging deep into the financials and the balance sheets and all these different numbers for these legacy automakers. And this outcome that has been talked about is likely much closer than a lot of people realize. And I'm actually quite shocked by how little coverage this is getting in news media. They all have essentially the same structure and Ford and GM are gonna be very representative for what every other legacy automaker looks like. And we'll start by looking at the balance sheet. A balance sheet is a form that shows what a company owns and owes. Public companies like GM and Ford have to essentially go out to their investors and say, hey, this is how much we owe, this is how much we own, and they have to do this every single quarter. What the company owns is called an asset, and what the company owes, it's called a liability. And this is an example of what a balance sheet looks like. The one on the left is GM's, and the one on the right is Ford's. Don't worry, I'm not going to force you to look through these forms. I've simplified them quite a bit for this video. And like magic, here's a simplification. The top half is the assets, and the bottom half is the liabilities. To really drive home the point of how dire the situation is for Ford and GM, I'm going to compare them to Tesla, which is the only auto maker in the world that's making significant volume for electric vehicles at a significant margin or profit. Starting with assets, there are three primary categories. We'll start with cash, which is no different than you or I's bank account. The next one is financing, which is how much GM and Ford expect to get from all the loans they've given out to customers when they buy or lease a car. And the last one is all other, which is things like property, equipment, etc. The big thing you'll notice here is that GM and Ford have upwards of $80 billion of financing the expect to get back from customers, whereas Tesla has zero. This is because most legacy automakers have a financing arm where they offer loans and leases to customers when they go into a dealership to buy those cars. In this case, Tesla doesn't have a financing arm and they rely on third parties to give out loans or leases to customers. In the bottom half, we have liabilities, which is basically what the company owes. We have debts for both GM and Ford around 20 billion, and these are things like building out future factories or equipment. You also have financing, which is upwards of 110 and billion dollars. And this is tied to the collateral or the cars that GM and Ford and other automakers sell to customers. Think about it this way. When you go to a dealership and you buy a car or you lease a car, Ford and GM are fronting the full value of the car so that you can drive it off the lot. And then over time as a customer, you're paying that back to GM and Ford. The money that GM and Ford are fronting you is what's sitting in this liability bucket. And then lastly, you have all other, which is any other debts or liabilities Ford and GM and Tesla have. Total assets for GM and Ford are upwards of $260 billion and Tesla's is roughly $75 billion. And liabilities for GM and Ford are upwards of $205 billion, whereas Tesla's is roughly $33 billion. And so the biggest thing that probably sticks out here is that Tesla doesn't have that many assets compared to GM and Ford, and they also don't have nearly as much debt or liabilities as GM and Ford. And this point is extremely important for the rest of the video. If you're enjoying this video so far, I would love it if you throw me a like. It helps the YouTube algorithm show this to more people. Thank you very much. Now, there are two huge variables in 2023 that are going to cause all kinds of headaches and trouble for Ford and GM. And these two things are a recession and transition to electric vehicles. If you're watching this video, I'm sure you've talked to friends, you're reading news headlines, why everyone thinks a recession is coming in 2023, and Vanguard sees a recession in 2023, and one silver lining for investors, which is completely irrelevant <laughs> after reading the article. <laughs> there has been a lot of fear with the Fed raising rates ever since we exited COVID that this is gonna cause a huge slowdown in the economy. When I talk to friends and family, I hear rumblings of, hey, I'm not buying as many things, I'm kind of saving up money just in case 2023 gets weird. And I would love to hear if you're hearing the same things as well, drop it in the comment section below if you are. But essentially, if we enter a recession, what ends up happening is that people tend to buy less things, especially expensive things like cars, going on trips, I don't know, going out to restaurants, people will instead save their money and they won't go out and purchase these big ticket items. Which of course, for companies like GM and Ford and other legacy automakers and Tesla could mean less car sales in 2023. But there's one offsetting force, especially for electric vehicle makers that could generate demand. And this is a transition to electric vehicles, especially with different incentives that governments are giving customers. For example, the United States is introducing in January of 2023, a $7,500 tax credit that's gonna apply to many different electric vehicles 
was sold in the United States. And news just broke today that the US Treasury says consumer leases can qualify for EV tax credits, which essentially means that there's going to be more demand for electric vehicles in 2023, especially in the United States and any other countries that offer EV incentives. And so if you're a legacy automaker like Ford and GM, you have a lot of business that's tied to gas cars. Well over 90% of legacy automakers production is tied to gas cars instead of electric vehicles. And this also applies to over 90% of the loans that they've given out, over 90% of the loans they expect to be paid back, 90% of the equipment, 90% of the factory, so on and so forth. And so how will a recession and a transition away from the gas car to the electric vehicle impact companies like GM and Ford? And this is where the story starts to get really grim for companies like GM and Ford and other legacy automakers. A recession and a transition away from gas cars is going to put a giant strain on these companies in 2023. And their cash flows are going to be dramatically impacted by either one of these things. And just like with the balance sheet, I've gone ahead and I pulled the cash flow statements from Ford and GM and other legacy automakers. And I've simplified it so we can study just how dramatic the impact from a recession and the transition away from gas cars will be on companies like Ford and GM. You can think of cash flow as the net number of dollars left in your business after you sell your things and then you pay for the things. So as an example, if I sell something for a thousand bucks and it costs me $800 to make it, 50 bucks to ship it, and I don't know, I have 50 bucks in interest payments I have to pay on loans and whatever else, that means that my net cash flow is positive 100. And fortunately, all public companies break down every single bit of their business by these statements. I've divided the cash flow statements into four primary sections. Operations is the net number of dollars the business makes from selling things as a business. Investing is the net number of dollars made or sold from investments you made into the company. Financing is the amount of money you've made or lost by offering loans and leases to customers. And the exchange rate is how much money you've made or lost by changing the value from the US dollar to whatever other currency you're selling in in other countries. And if we add up all these divisions, you can see that starting with GM, GM has lost for the first nine months of this year, $43 million. So if they started with say $20 billion in January of this year, they've lost $43 million in cash since that time. Ford has added about 984 million and Tesla has added over $2 billion in cash. And these numbers become much more severe if you compare it to how much business the companies do in total. If we compare them to how many cars they've shipped in this year, you can see that GM has delivered almost 5 million cars, Ford has delivered roughly 3 million cars, and Tesla has delivered about 900,000 cars. If we take that total cash flow number through the end of September and compare it to how many cars they've shipped, GM has lost about $9 of cash per car they've sold. And you've heard that correctly. Every time GM sells a car in 2022, their starting cash balance of the year goes down by $9. They are already losing money every time they sell you a car. Ford earns about $319 per car sold, and Tesla earns upwards of $2,000 per car sold. If we compare this to the average selling price of the cars they sell into the market, GM loses about 0.3% of the car's value in cash, Ford gains about 0.88%, and Tesla gains a little over 4% per car sold. And I hope what this illustrates is the tightrope that GM and Ford have to walk on in order to be profitable as car manufacturers. If for whatever reason Ford would lose 1% of their selling price and they're not able to catch it up anywhere else in their business, they would be losing money just like GM on every single car that they sell. And so this tightrope is the huge problem here. Ford, GM, and basically every other other automaker has the same exact financial situation going into a potential recession and going into an environment where all world governments are incentivizing EV sales, of which Legacy Auto has less than 10% of the total capacity in. And so let's go ahead and take all the numbers we've just looked at and see how a recession and the EV tax credits are going to impact for GM and other Legacy automakers. Let's start with the impact of a recession. Knowing that recessions are going to impact sales, the cash flow from operations for GM Ford, and probably Tesla as well, is going to be less in a recessionary environment versus where we are right now, meaning that the cash flows from operations will be less than whatever is stated here in this statement. In addition, the financing that Ford and GM and other legacy automakers offer are going to be impacted by a recession as well. For example, if people lose their jobs and they can't pay their bills, then that means that the loans that they have outstanding won't be paid. This is an impact on Ford and GM's ability to generate cash. And as you can see, Tesla and 
this case has no financing. They don't offer financing. All the financing is handled by a third party. And so in the case of a recession, GM, Ford, and other legacy automakers are hit much, much harder than a company like Tesla. And if that wasn't crappy enough, let's layer on top of that what the EV transition is going to do to legacy automakers. Again, a reminder that over 90% of assets and liabilities of legacy auto are tied to gas cars. In the case of an EV transition, companies that are able to sell into that demand are going to drastically benefit from that transition. Companies like Tesla are going to grow their sales, which is probably going to offset any impact from a recession. However, in the case of GM and Ford, over 90% of their sales and well over 99% of their profits come from gas cars. If people choose to buy an EV instead of a gas car in this case, the cash flow they'll get from operations will be much less because they're not going to be able to offset the gas car sales with EV sales. And again, this is due to the fact that legacy automakers haven't built in enough capacity to really absorb the EV demand that's going to be out there into the coming years. Think about it this way. For every one EV they sell at likely a loss, they're going to lose at least one gas car sale that would have made them money. This is a double whammy to their profitability. And so what you should expect is that GM and Ford and other automakers are going to generate less cash flow from operations, especially starting in 2023. In addition, if we look at all the assets and liabilities that GM and Ford and other legacy automakers have, again, these are tied to gas cars. And so all the properties, all the equipment, all the loans, all the collateral you have, you've invested in a technology that's going to become worthless over time. Let's use the example of the VHS. Do you remember back in the day when all of us had VHS tapes and we used to watch Disney movies and our VHS machine and all this good stuff? Take this VHS tape and try to sell this to somebody and see how much you can sell it for. I bet you, you probably can't even get a nickel for that VHS. It's gone completely out of favor. It's been replaced by companies like Netflix and streaming services that have made that technology obsolete. This is what's happening to gas cars as well. All the factories, all the equipment, everything they've invested to build those gas cars is now going out of favor. And so that technology and all the equipment used to make that technology is going to become worthless over time. And because GM and Ford and other legacy automakers, over 90% of their assets and liabilities are tied to that old technology, that means that there's hundreds of billions of dollars tied up on things that are going to become worthless. Let's look at it a different way. Let's look at it from a dollars at risk standpoint. If we add up all the cash flow from operations, all those assets, all those liabilities, you can see that GM and Ford have upwards of $440 billion at risk because of this transition. Whereas a company like Tesla, who's 100% of their investments are in this new technology, they have nothing at risk because this is going to be the new technology that's going to be adopted by the public. And again, let's think about the tightrope that GM and Ford are already walking on. GM is already losing cash for every car they sell. Ford is not even making 1% of their sales in cash. And I'm sure you can see just how little it's going to take to put these companies into a very dangerous trajectory. Let's put it a different way. Let's look at the cash balance of both Ford and GM. They both have roughly $20 billion in cash on hand. But let's compare this to the dollars at risk that these companies have as a business. This means if you add up all the cash flows, all the assets, all the liabilities, a 5% change to the downside equals Ford and GM's total cash balance. In other words, because they've invested so much into something that's going to be heavily impacted by a recession, in addition to a transition away from gas cars to a new technology, it's not going to take that much to completely bankrupt those companies. And I truly believe this is reflected in the stock market. Let's look at the forward PEs, which is a multiple of expected earnings that a company is going to have in the next 12 months of GM, Ford, and Tesla. For GM and Ford, the market is expecting roughly six years worth of earnings earnings out of these companies, where they're expecting roughly 22 years for Tesla, meaning that the stock market is much more confident in giving a valuation to Tesla that's more long term than GM and Ford. And so the biggest thing that I've learned from studying these companies in the last couple of days is that all the fears that I've had around this transition, hurting legacy auto, hurting companies like GM, hurting companies like Ford is going to come to fruition much faster and much more violently than I expected. Initially, I thought this was going to be much more gradual because of 
of the EV tax credit. It was going to take time for these companies to scale up their production. And in the meantime, they could maybe borrow money or, or perhaps somehow extend their ability to survive into the future. However, a recession puts these companies at additional peril and they have so much at stake, so much already invested in a technology that's going away that the slightest bit of change to the downside is going to absolutely destroy these companies. I would love to hear your opinion in the comments. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think I'm looking at it correctly? Do you think these companies will be able to survive this transition? Do you think they're better off than I'm painting them to be? Please leave me a comment and let me know what you think. If you want to talk about this or other topics with my private community, consider becoming a Patreon Will you get access to our private Discord. You can also gain access by signing up through YouTube right below by clicking on join. And if you'd like to support the channel by purchasing merch, just like the hoodie I'm wearing right now, consider doing that by using the link in the description as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was valuable and we'll see you in the next one. Take it easy, everybody. Bye-bye.